Well, hello, Teak Fellows. This is your first online video lesson that we'll be doing. Now, of course, I've posted videos before in the resource, but this is it. This is our actual lesson going on right here. Um, and so I got to say, what better thing to be doing when you are under quarantine or you can't go to school uh, than to learn at home and to learn coding at home? Gosh, you're lucky. So I'm happy to be here doing this with you guys. Um, and what we're going to be learning today is something called loops, which is a very powerful thing to use in computer science. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but I just want to be clear before we begin. You're going to be doing two sketches today, which you will submit as part of your assignment. Um, yes. So what I'd like to show you is this. I would like to show you that you're going to first name this loop sketch one, and then we'll do a second sketch after this. So what are loops? Loops are uh, ways of performing a task over and over again. So sometimes you want to do something more than once, all right? Um, and instead of coding it out, let's say a hundred, a thousand, a million times, you'll just create a loop that does something over and over again. So let's say I wanted to make, like simulate a starry sky here. Um, I would try to make a bunch of little stars, but you'd need a lot of stars. So I could go like ellipse, uh, we'll start with like 20, 20, uh, five, Let's do another ellipse of like, I don't know, 40, 10, 5. We can do another ellipse at like, I can do this for a while, 145. And we'll get some stars on our screen now. Right? Oh, look, we got three little stars. But to make a whole starry sky, do you think that someone would actually sit around and code every single star? Do you think the people at Pixar are doing that many stars? No, they do something called a for loop. So a for loop will just draw let's say 100 circles in one uh, using a loop. So let's talk a little bit about that because I do want to make a starry sky, but I don't want to code out all these uh, all these ellipses. So here is where I'd like you to start coding along with me. So the way a for loop works is that you have to provide it with three arguments, all right? So the first thing your argument, the argument you're gonna give it is, where do you want this for loop to start? At what number, all right? So usually by convention, people say i equals zero. i just being an arbitrary variable, you call this cat, you can call this mom, you can call this uh, Ben, who cares, right? i is by convention. So we're gonna say, I wanna start at the number zero. So the first number is where I start. So let's put a little note here, two backslashes. Four loops take three arguments. Arguments. One, where to start. Two, where to end, and three, how much to increment by. So let's talk about that. So the first thing is where to start. So i equals zero. So we're going to start the number zero. Then you put a semicolon, and I can't tell you how many times it made errors because there was a comma there. Just put a semicolon. And we're going to say i is less than 20. So as long as i is less than the number 20, we're going to keep going up. And then how much do we want to go up by? Well, you could say like i plus plus would be i go up by one. You can say i plus equals five, which means go up by five. Or i plus equals 10, go up by 10. So this is how much you wanna go up by each time. So let's just start with a simple one. We're gonna do i plus plus, which means go up by one. And then you use curly braces. Now inside the curly braces is like, what do you want to happen from zero to 20 or 19 in this case? So the first thing you do is you draw a bunch of circles. So let's say I made an ellipse. I want the x-coordinate to be i. I mean, I want the y-coordinate to be 20, and I want the uh, diameter to be 20. If I try doing that, well, you'll see that I have this little streak of circles here, right? Because there's actually 20 circles drawn one apart from each other. So the first one's at zero, the next x-coordinate is at one, the next x-coordinate is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way up till 19, and then it stops. But let's say I want to go all the way across the screen. Well, there's a few ways you could accomplish this. One fun way to do that is instead of just taking i, which is 0 through 19, we could say i times 25, let's say. And what that would do is, if I press play, now they it's taking that i number and multiplying by 25 so it goes all the way across. So if you think about this, when i starts at a 0, 0 times 25, the x squared is 0. When i is now 1, because it goes up by 1, 1 times 25 is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. 3 times 25 is 75. 4 times 25 is 100. I knew that. I'm sorry. I was thinking about other things. 
But you get the point. So we can make this go all the way across, all the way, all the way up. I'd like you to make a prediction here. What do you think would happen if I were, instead of putting it over here, the i, let's just change this to 20 so the x is always 20. And let's change our y to i times 25. Before pressing the play button, make a prediction. What do you think will happen here? Well, when I press play, you'll see that now it goes down, right? Because now instead of adding to the x coordinate, the x is always going to be 20. But now the y coordinates, 0, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, and so on and so forth. So by changing where you put your variable, you could change how this looks. And now I'll just show you all sorts of kind of fun things you could do with this. So let's take, let's change this again. So instead of putting for our y variable, let's put it over here. Let's do i times, instead of doing 25, let's do i times 3. What do you think would happen when I press play now? Take a guess. Well, if you guess that the diameter is going to increase each time, you'd be right. So let's try pressing play. Oop, you'll see that they actually go on top of each other. So let's try to do something a little bit more fancy. So let's do i times 20 for the y, and then i times 3. And now you'll see that we get this kind of cool effect where the i, the diameter keeps increasing. So the first one's 0 times 3, so the first one is 0, all the way up here. The next one's 1 times 3, so the diameter is 3. Uh, then 6. 9, 12, I know my multiplication table, all the way up to, let's see, 19 times 3, which would be 57. So the diameter is now increasing along with the y. And maybe we can even have more fun with this. We could do i times 20 and have it go across like that. So that's a pretty cool graphic, right? So we got 20 circles really quickly, and that's a fun thing you can do. Now just to show you some more fun you can have with this, we can add color. So let's say we say fill. And we made our fill, um, let's say, i. Uh, we'll do 255 minus i. And we'll do um, i times 3. I mean, this doesn't really work, but let's just try it. And maybe we'll make this i times 4. Um, no, i times 20. Mm, yeah. This will go over the 255 restriction, but let's just have fun with it. 15. Okay, 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 okay. I'm done now. Um, and that should be a comma. So many mistakes there. So let's try this. And you'll see now we've got a cool graphic because now as it goes on, the number keeps changing. And we get a different color as it slides down. And maybe we could just do this a little more simply. Maybe we'll just do I, 255, 255. So we're increasing our, um, let's see, that increases the amount of red. As it goes down until we get all the way white. Maybe we could take this zero, so it goes down like this. Increase the amount of yellow. Maybe we could do this, uh, where we actually add an alpha, where we say like there's a hundred here, so we add a fourth number. I'm not sure if you've done that before, so we get this cool effect. So this looks kind of beautiful, right? We're getting this kind of cool effect going on here um, that you wouldn't have totally predicted. That looks nice, right? And then that's it for this sketch. I'm liking where we're at here. Now, this is where I'm going to say, let's make a second uh, sketch, all right? This was just using for loops. Now I'm going to show you what happens when we use nested for loops. Ooh, it's about to get kind of crazy. So we're going to save this, and we'll go make a new sketch. Oh, so it doesn't see. got to save that first. Let's make a new sketch. And once again, what we're going to do is, now we're going to use two for loops. And you'll see how this kind of adds a little bit more power. So what I can do is this. I'm going to say for i equals zero, just like we did before. And we're gonna say i uh, is less than 20 still. And we're gonna do i plus plus. Now inside of this for loop, we're going to put another for loop. If four, j is equal to zero. And once again, this could just be whatever you want it to be. This could have been anything j is just by convention. j is less than 25, it really doesn't matter. We should do 20, but it makes no difference. And then we'll do j plus plus. Now we should have this. Now I also wanted to say this one thing. I actually made an error. You might have sort of weird click the uh, like cut there. That's because if you don't write any of these correctly, you could actually end up in an infinite loop, meaning like it just keeps going on forever and ever. Like it never meets the condition where i equals twenty. So for example, let's say instead of doing i plus plus, you just put i here. What this means is it won't go up by one each time. So meaning it'll go zero zero zero. It'll keep running it forever and ever. So it makes, if your computer is crashing, it's because you haven't written this out perfectly, all 
right? It just happened to me, but I edited it out so you actually couldn't see it. All right, so where this gets interesting is now we can do something like this. We can say ellipse i for our x coordinate, j for our y coordinate, and 20. So just take a quick look here. You'll see that it actually kind of just moved across like this but it's kind of hard to see. So let's actually make this a little bit cooler looking. So let's do I times 25 like we've been doing, J times 25 like we've been doing. And now, wow. So remember, so for X time, each time I is zero, it's gonna run this loop as well, 25 times. So for X, for I equals zero, it now runs it all the way down. For I equals one, it runs it all the way down. For I equals two, it runs it all the way down. So now you get this really cool graphic. And we can put some fills on this. So we could say fill, we say i, uh, comma, j minus, sorry, 255 minus j. Sorry, let's make this i times 5j. And I'm just messing around with numbers here. Like I'm really just making this up. As you probably figured that out by now. Um, and let's see if we get a cool effect here. Okay, that's not bad. We can make it a little bit cooler, I think. Let's see, we can make this 100. You can see it has this nice little pattern to it. Maybe we could do times 10. Ooh, you see how it kind of, uh, we got this nice like linear gradient going on here. So that looks pretty cool. But that's not the only thing we could do. We could keep messing around with numbers. Instead of just doing I times 25, J times 25, why don't we also just make the, uh, the diameter or something kind of dynamic? We'll do I times J. Whoa, you get a really cool effect there. Or you could just do like I plus 20. Sorry, I times 10. You get a cool effect like that. Or you can do I plus J. I don't know, I'm just messing around with things. You can see all these different patterns you can get. But the point of the matter is, you could always mess with your X, your Y, and your diameter to get all these great effects going on with these nested loops. And they take up so much more of the screen. And just to show you one last thing, it doesn't have to be ellipses. I know I did ellipses in this video, but we can also just do lines. So let's say we change this to line. Now a line takes in four coordinates. So you have your, um, your x, your y, your x1, y1, and then you have your x2, y2. Let's just make this i and j. Um, instead of fill, because y is on a fill, let's change that to stroke. And now you get this cool graphic. So there's all these great things you could do, and you see that we only have 13 lines of code in here. So you really get some amazing things with for loops. If you just mess around with your X, your Y, these different numbers, just change things around, change the shapes, change anything, and you will see you get these crazy, crazy effects. They're really fun. So that is it for today's video lesson. Um, check out your assignment. Let's do it at normal time. So best of luck to you guys, and that is it for this lesson. Please feel free to reach out with any questions that you have to any of your instructors, and have a very, very safe week. Bye.